Hey, sweet family. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Yeah, I know. We're still here, aren't we? Passover isn't over yet. It ends on the 23rd. But even if it passes us by, we're going to be okay. So here we are. Apparently, we are called to wait just a little longer. The thing I want to tell you is if we are called to wait a little longer, then God will enable us to do just that. Regardless of our situation, whether we are waiting in relative comfort and just witnessing from afar the upheaval going on all around us, or if we are in the midst of the upheaval and are experiencing real hardship, either way, He will enable us to wait and hang in there until He appears. And we can even be content and at peace while doing it. Look at this. Paul, when writing to the Philippians in chapter 4, said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now this doesn't mean that you can just decide all of a sudden that you can be president or an NFL player or a business tycoon because God will strengthen you to do it, to do whatever you want. It doesn't mean you can do whatever you want or set your mind to. What it does mean is that no no matter how easy or how dire our circumstance, God will enable us to do what He has called us to do in that circumstance, and we can learn to be content in it. Paul learned contentment even while being imprisoned. He learned how to be abased, which means to be brought low or humbled. Adam Clark said in the following about Paul, See here the state to which God permitted His chief apostle to be reduced, and see how powerfully the grace of Christ supported him under the whole. How few of those who are called Christian ministers or Christian men have learned this important lesson. When want or affliction comes, their complaints are loud and frequent, and they are soon at the end of their patience. I know I have been guilty of loud and frequent complaints in hard and disappointing times. Jesus uses those times we all experience to strengthen us. It does not seem pleasant or fun at the time, But our stubborn, weak selves apparently need to be taken out of our comfort zones in order to ever grow. The strength of Jesus in Paul's life was evident in his ability to be content in his circumstances. That is also how it it evidences itself in our lives as well. Now Paul doesn't leave, leave us hanging with no advice for how to be content in all circumstances. He spends most of chapter 3 and the first part of chapter 4 telling us how to be content in all circumstances. I'm going to hit the high points here, just some summary points in my own words, but for some real encouragement, just go read the book of Philippians. I call this list Paul's Secrets to Contentment. These are things we should all practice. Rejoice in the Lord. Beware of false teachers and Judaizers. Have no confidence in your flesh. That's a biggie. Have confidence only in your Savior. Count your accomplishments as nothing, but consider Jesus a prize above all things. Believe you have the righteousness of Christ by faith in His sacrifice for you. Forget the things that are behind. In this case, high watch days maybe. Reach forward toward the things that are before us. Keep the heavenly things on your mind. Press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God unto Jesus. Make good choices and live godly lives day in and day out. Ask God to reveal truth to you. Follow Paul's example and beware of the wolves. Remember, your citizenship is in heaven, not here, and we are looking for Jesus. Remember, He is going to change our vile bodies to make them like His own. Stand fast in the Lord. Get along with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, rejoice in the Lord. Let your moderation, your good behavior, be known to all. And remember, the Lord is at hand. He's near. Do not be anxious or fearful, but pray about everything 
Ask for what you need and give thanks to the Lord. Control your thought life. Paul lists all the types of things we should think about, things that are true, praiseworthy, lovely, etc. If we think on these things and follow Paul's example, we are promised peace. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And verse 9 says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the peace of God shall be with you. So we are given a formula to being at peace and being content in our circumstances. If we practice those things, then contentment will follow. Does that seem like it's too hard to do, to be at peace and to be content when we know He's coming, but it just isn't time yet? Wouldn't it be great if we could always live this way with these guideposts? You know that the enemy will do whatever he can to throw, off, throw you off balance and steal your peace and contentment. The minute you think you have it all under control, then wham, there he comes out of nowhere and steals your peace. If it seems too hard to remain at peace and to be content on our own, even with Paul's formula, don't worry. God does not expect you to do this in your own power. It is impossible on our own to do so anyway, but if God empowers us, we absolutely can be content and at peace in any circumstance, regardless of what the wicked one throws at us. We who are believers have the power of God at our disposal to enable us to live the way He wants us to live. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. God never intended for us to have to do all this on our own. Although sometimes we choose to make it harder on ourselves and not rely on his power in us, we live this life by faith that He will live His life through us. We are His body and are vessels through which His grace and strength can flow if we push ourselves aside and trust that He will indeed live His life through us and enable us to do whatever it is He is asking us to do. In this case, He is asking us to wait a bit longer. And brothers and sisters, I don't think He's asking us to wait a whole lot longer. I'm just saying He's asking us to wait just, just a little bit longer. So whether we are in heaven with Jesus or still on earth waiting for the rapture, we can do it if we do it through Christ and the strength He gives us. We can wait in abundance and we can wait in need. We can wait in comfort and we can wait in discomfort. We can face all of life's circumstances through Christ who strengthens us. The cool thing about all this is we do not place our faith in a date. We talked about that in an earlier video, and also I have seen other channels talk about this. We place our faith in Christ alone and hope in Him only. I know that can be easier said than done, especially when we feel disappointed. Also, it is still spring, and we still have many high watch days ahead. Eventually the day will come. I remember waiting for each of my kids to be born. At first, the waiting was so exciting and delightful. You try out all the names, you daydream about whether you're having a boy or a girl. You decorate the nursery and make all kinds of changes in preparation. But as you go heavier and time draws closer, it gets a bit harder. Your energy is gone, you are uncomfortable, and the things you used to do easily become more difficult and tiring. By the end, as your due date arrives, or even passes, you wonder if you can wait one more minute. With my first child, I thought I was starting labor and went to the doctor, but they sent me back home and said it wasn't time. And it wasn't. I was so disappointed. Of course, I was really ready to meet my firstborn, but honestly, I had had enough of being pregnant. The last days of each of my pregnancies were not my favorite. I was just pretty much done with the process. It just seemed to last longer than I thought it should have. Anyway, I feel there are some parallels with this in waiting for the rapture. It feels to me like we are just about to pass the due date, and we are tired of this process. We are ready, ready for this baby to be born, aren't we, brothers and sisters? You know what? Each of my kids, even though I thought they were running late, each one of them eventually were born. And just like that, all the impatience and discomfort and agonizing was gone. Just like that. 
It was all a vague memory because the joy of the birth of my child overshadowed all of it. And just like that, one day it will be time for the rapture, and we will rejoice at our birth into heaven, just like that. So brothers and sisters, take courage. We are on the home stretch. Let's choose to honor Him in the manner in which we wait for Him and be content in all circumstances. I love you all, and I'll see you on the next one. Maybe you are watching this video, but you don't know if you're going to go on the rapture or not. I want to tell you, it all boils down to what you do with Jesus. Know that it is no accident you are here. I promise you the only place to find the truth is in Christ Jesus and His Word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. God wants to give you the free gift of eternal life. He offers it to all, but it is through Christ alone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have eternal life. Salvation is as simple as believing Jesus died on the cross, shedding his blood for your sins, and rose on the third day. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Once you place your faith in Jesus, you are eternally secure, sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are adopted as a child of the Most High God. You now have no fear of death, for when you die you will go to heaven rather than spend an eternity in hell separated from God. You also do not need to fear your future, because God holds your future in His loving strong hands. And if you place your faith in Christ, you will go in the rapture. I pray you will believe on Jesus today. Love you all.